Hello everybody, Daniel here again with some antinatalism thoughts, some ponderings on antinatalism. Again, it's been some time since I've posted anything, but I like to try to think of novel ways to explain this concept to people because there is so much resistance uh, just to the notion. Of course, this comes, you know, the antinatalism again being the idea that it's better not to bring life into the world for a couple of reasons. One is we cannot gain the consent of the unborn. That's an argument that doesn't people don't seem to understand very well, but I think it's a very solid one. And the other part of it is that life contains enough suffering that uh, the net value of being alive does not, does not in any way outweigh uh, the pain. So better not to have been, as David Benatar would say. But I think today what I want to try to dive into is the, uh, and you can, you can use this if you want when you're speaking to folks who've never heard this idea or are resistant to it, that everybody is an antinatalist if things are bad enough. So let me explain. I'll put this idea forward. So and let's imagine that a couple is going to have a child, but uh, we know now through, through genetics and, and science that let's just imagine this hypothetical that there is a almost 100% chance that that child will be not only severely retarded and disabled, but will experience just ongoing pain uh, for, their, for their relatively short life. And, and that's what the couple are told. If you want to have a child, there's an almost 100% chance this is going to be the outcome. And then you could ask that couple or any couple, would you like to proceed with a pregnancy? And of course, many people or almost all people would say, no. And then this is where you can say, okay, so what's the principle behind not continuing the pregnancy? Because you wanted to have a healthy child, but, but now you don't. And they, you know, being hopefully normal people, would, would reply something like, well, obviously that child's pain and suffering would be so great that it would not be a kindness to bring them into the world. And they're, they're antinatalists. That's an antinatalist sentiment. The only difference being is that their subjective valuation of suffering is, in this case, great enough to prevent them to continue the pregnancy. Now, you can continue with this thought experiment and say, well, what if we pulled it back a little bit? What if that child's life, they weren't severely retarded, but relatively retarded, and they had not total suffering physically, but, you know, 80%. And then you'd eventually see where the cutoff is, right? Maybe their cutoff would be something like, if the child is a little bit uh, slow, but would have a relatively good life, we hope, uh, with, with maybe a little bit more pain in the body than most kids would, but not significantly. But antinatalism is a spectrum. It's not an on-off switch. It's when you decide how much suffering is there or going to be there for, the, for that person you project, then you decide, okay, that's, that's no longer uh, something that I want to do. And this depends a lot on our own subjective, uh, I guess, stoicism or denial of our own pain. Um, and then versus others, more sensitivity or, or lack of denial to the difficulties of life. So that might help. So thanks again for listening.